What's up everybody, Keith Gabbard here, and in this video we are going to learn about how to add a Cisco iOS switch into our Genius 3 Lab environment. The first thing I need to bring to your attention now is you absolutely do need real Cisco iOS images. And what I mean by that, you can think of iOS images just like the operating system you install on your computer, be it Unix, Linux, or Windows. We need to install those operating systems on the computer itself before we could actually do anything within the computer. Same thing with our routers and switches. Each one of our routers and switches come with an operating system. And those files have to exist on the hardware itself for us to do anything within the switch. Now, one thing to also keep in the back of your minds is how routers are typically software-based, meaning all the processing a router does, even with the data coming into it, is done through software. So routers, you could relate to being software. And then with switches, they actually use what's called ASICs, which are integrated circuits, or and you know, in a sense, you could think of circuitry as hardware. So switches are hardware-based, where even though it still needs the operating system to perform, a lot of the processing it does with our data and the frames coming into a switch are done through hardware. So you could relate routers to being software-based and switches being hardware-based. You may have heard that out there before. I just wanted to explain it. So even though we're using real images, it's a virtual iOS image, and it's this one right here that you will need to download for this to work. And it's it's created by Cisco for their virtual lab environments, which is viral. So if you go here to Cisco Viral, you can indeed see it is a hundred dollars a year, or I'm sorry, two hundred dollars a year. However, it's excellent. I actually highly recommend this. This is by no means a paid endorsement. I am not being sponsored to advertise Cisco's viral application but it is pretty awesome. And you get several images that you could utilize and it works a lot better than it will within GNS3. So that is a huge you know, factor. Even though we're putting this real image into GNS3, it's still not 100%. And I will go over some of the differences that you need to be aware of so you're not confused or getting annoyed later on, but at least you'll have a good starting point. Another thing to remember is for those of you coming from Cisco Packet Tracer, you know, if you go into the TFTP server, you could actually indeed see all the different um, iOS files in here. But remember that these are slimmed down iOSs, meaning not all the commands will be there and you're going to be, you know, lacking some important features that you need for more complex topics within your Cisco studies. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Now, although this image, it's a little bit buggy and can be glitchy within GNS3, it's still going to allow you to do a lot more than what you can do within Packet Tracer for that reason. So let's go ahead and get started. Let's actually learn how to pull this image into GNS3. First thing you're going to do is go into Edit and Preferences. And we want to go down to Kimu VMs, okay? Now, I'm going to click New. The best way to run this is if you're running it within GNS3's virtual machine, okay? Now, I have GNS3's virtual machine running in here within VMware Workstation. And it kind of went to sleep on me, but it is it, it does exist in here. And it's just basically a you know a unique version of Linux for this to run on. But you still need to run it within something like VMware Workstation, and I'm running it in VMware Workstation 12 Pro. But you can run it on your local computer. But again, it's it's going to yell at you saying this should be ran on Genus 3's VM. If you just click next, just hit OK, it'll allow you to proceed. And I'm just going to name this uh, CV for Cisco Virtual iOS and Layer 2. And I'm just going to go ahead and click next. Now for the RAM, the default RAM, I'm going to say 512 just to give us a little bit more uh, room here. The Kimu binary file, you could leave the same. Click next. Telnet is fine. Click next. And here you're going to want to click new image, okay? And then all you got to do is browse to where that image exists within your computer. Click open. And then it's going to ask you if you want to make a copy of this to the default images directory. Now, I always hit yes here because it's a good idea to store that image somewhere if you are using Genus 3 all the time because maybe the folder that you have the file saved in originally gets moved or anything, well, then it's not going to work for you within Genus 3. So it's a good idea to store all your images within the default directory. That way, if you save labs and everything and you go to open those back up down the road, you're able to open those up. It'll find the images and you will have no issue. So here we could just click Finish. But we're not done. Even though we see it here, we want to go edit. Because you can see, uh, first of all, we have a computer icon here, which doesn't look too good. It's only got one adapter. The e the name format's a little off. So let's go ahead and fix those real quick. For the image, okay, I'm just going to use a multi-layer switch. I know this is not a real multi-layer switch, but it'll help differentiate it from the just generic unmanaged switch that GNS3 provides you. Another thing I want to do is go to network and change the adapter to maybe 16. 
And since it's going to be using gigabit Ethernet port, I'm just going to say GI0 forward slash. And then this zero here in brackets will just mean it'll auto populate for however many adapters we have. Since we have 16, this will say 00 through 015. Pretty cool. So we're going to click OK, click apply, click OK, and we are good. So now here you can see what I meant by like this is the typical Ethernet switch that is the unmanaged switch that provide or GNS3 provides you. And now you could differentiate the one that you added a little bit better. So now we could just drag this over to our time or our uh, lab environment here. And all you got to do is right click, start it up, and then you're going to right click it again and click console. Now this is going to take a few minutes to boot up. So I'm going to go ahead and pause the video while this goes ahead and loads up. And when it's done, we will meet right back here. Now once this loads up, we can just go ahead and go into enable mode. And I want to show you guys something to be aware of where it's going to annoy you tremendously. Trust me. If you do show interface status here, you're going to notice that even though it went from 0 through 15 out here, for example, if I just brought in a typical Ethernet switch, connect it to my local server, and cable this together, 0, 0 to uh, 0 there. But you notice, look how the format of the interfaces are here. Well, that's going to be a lot different than what you see here. You can see these are almost set up like modules. You'd have module 1, you have module or 0, module 1, module 2, module 3. And this almost emulates kind of like what a modular switch would be or a chassis switch. So if I even hit up here and I wanted to search more specifically to which interfaces, I could even say show interface status mod 3. And it's only going to show me the ports related to that. So what I like to do is actually just create a simple little Excel document listing all these the way they are here. And then go back out here and say, okay, well, all these are these. So just list them side by side. That way you can correlate them nice and easily. That way if you plug in a port 7 here, you're not trying to, you know, go back and forth through the entire switch being like, oh, well, what's going on here? Because it'll get a little confusing for you. Another thing to remember, and, you know, I always teach this in my CCNA courses, is to make sure you do the line console 0 no, or uh, logging synchronous. So if we do config T line con zero you're going to want to do a logging synchronous especially on a real device this will just help you know save you a lot of time and aggravation as different syslog messages come through here your cursor doesn't just keep getting jumped around now one other major thing for this ios is this goes back to some of the legacy type configurations for a switch not that it's legacy or legacy they're still out there one thing you need to remember with cisco is they are consistently inconsistent with their configurations and their syntax for their commands so to configure a trunk link right typically you go into interface g00 and then you would say switch port mode trunk blah 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 but watch this if i hit enter it's going to say an interface whose trunk encapsulation is auto cannot be configured to trunk mode well, some of you might be like, all right, well, what's that mean? Well, we have to tell it to be encapsulated. So you'd say switch port trunk encapsulate 802.1q, uh, I believe it is. Uh, a encapsulation dot 1q. There we go, dot 1q. So once you do that, we can now go switch port mode trunk, and that will be a trunk link. And we could even go a step further, do show interface status, or we could actually say do show... Uh, run interface g00 and we could see okay we do have that encapsulated we do now have that as a mode now another thing that might confuse a lot of people is they might think okay well the negotiation is set for auto which you would typically expect for encapsulation well for this ios this is actually negotiating speed and media type for cable but we could also go in and say interface g00 um, no negotiation auto and it's good okay so if we do show interface or do show run interface g00 you can now see it's no negotiation all right so just a couple things within this virtual ios that you should be aware of and this should help a lot of you out i keep always getting questions on how do i use switches in genus 3 this is how i do it Typically, I try to steer away from this. I will use Cisco Viral when I need to, or 90% of the time when I'm teaching um, CCNA classrooms, you know, students in classrooms, I actually have real Cisco switches and routers for people to play with. It just helps you out that much more better. All right, so please do not forget to subscribe. Smash that like button if you have not, and I will see you in the next one.